Hi, my name is Bintu and today I am going to teach you how to work with conditional statements in JSP. JSP, Java Server Pages, one of the finest scripting language that is used for creating sophisticated and fully featured web applications. I assume that you have seen my earlier two videos of running your JSP code in NetBeans, the first JSP code in uh, NetBeans and how the data is passed from one JSP form to another. If you haven't, these are the URLs uh, available on YouTube. Tutorials are in both languages, in English as well as in Hindi language. These are the URLs for that. Please have a view to it. And I'm going to explain everything through practical, right? So I'm just going to start with NetBeans first. NetBeans IDE, one of the wonderful IDEs. This is the initial screen that you get when you load your NetBeans. Click on File, New Project. Because we are going to make a Java web application, click the Java web category, web application. Here give any name, say understanding conditional app, what's our name, click on next. It is asking you which server you are going to use for executing your JHP scripts. Let's choose Apache Tomcat and this is showing you that uh, what Java compiler that it is going to use for compiling your JHP. So let's, let it be the default values, I'll click on next. It is asking you which frame are you going to use for your JSP applications. Because this application that I am going to make is just for the simple understanding of conditional statements. It is not very sophisticated application so I won't be requiring any framework. Click on finish. So NetBeans will create application for you. It will auto generate codes for you. It will create one index.html file by default with this default code. I don't want HTML code. I want JSP code. I will right click it and delete it. And to this web pages node, I'll right click, click on new to add one JSP form. Click on JSP option. It is asking you what is that JSP file that you want to give, conditional, whatever, or you can give a conditional page, whatever. Select JSP file standard syntax option because you are not creating any segment, JSP segment, you are not creating any JSP doc file. Let it be the default. Click on finish. So it will create a code for you by default with hello world. And if you run it, it will display the world, uh, it will display the text hello world. Let's check it. Right click on it and click on run file option. See, this is displaying hello world. But I don't want this code. I want to check the conditional statements. So I've written some code for you earlier uh, already. This is one uh, script that I've created for you. See, this is the opening tag of JSP and this is the closing tag of JSP. This is the indication to the JSP engine inside the server that please convert this code between this uh, between these tags into Java servlets. Here I am initializing n as an integer variable, initializing it to value 9. So the value of n will become 9. This is mod operator. This will divide n by 2 and the remainder is assigned to the integer m. So when 9 is divided by 2, remainder will be 1 that will be assigned to m. This is the if block. In the if block, there is a logical expression. If it is true, it will go and run this if block opening this this code between this opening and closing bracket. If this logical expression is false, it will display this code. So because the value of m is 1, it will go and display the number is odd. Had it been 0, it will go and display as number is even. Odd dot printer means display on the screen. Right. So let's copy this code and paste it here between the body elements. And let's run it. Right click and run file option. Obviously, it will display the number is odd because the value of n has taken best 9 and the remainder will be 1 assigned to m. Let's make it 10. Let's see it whether it works correctly now. Click on run file. The output should be the number is even. Let's see it. Number is even. So, this code is working perfectly. The only drawback in this code is that the value is you have set it to 9. I want that the value should be entered by the user. So let's modify this code to this one. Here what you're doing, you're displaying a text message, enter a numerical value in bold. So this will appear in bold, break, the cursor will go on to the next line. Here you're defining a form with the method is will get. See there's no action, you're not sending this form to some another file. When the user will click on submit, it will run this JSP code only, it won't go anywhere here. Suppose if you write action and some file here. It will go to the target file. You are defining a form and here in this form you are defining one text element, text box. 
and whatever the user will enter in that text box will be assigned to number variable. The text box will be of size 20 pixels, 20 characters anyway. And below that box, text box will be a submit button. When you click on submit, it will rerun its own code. It will obviously run here, this JSP code. What you are doing that whatever the value is assigned to num variable in this form will be accessed through request.get parameter method assigned to some value string variable. When only one value is sent from a form, the method uses get parameter. If this form is sending more than one value, then the method we use is get parameter values. That value will be in string format. If the form is sending more than one value and you are using get parameter values, then here you have to mention one string array, not a string variable, right? So in any way, this string variable assign the value that has been entered by the user. You are checking if user has entered a value or not. If it is not null, then it will go and execute this code. Here, you are converting that string value into a numerical value, integer.parsint. This will convert a string into integer and that value will be assigned to n. This is mod operator. This will divide the value of n by 2 and the remainder will be assigned to m. If m is 1, it will go and execute this if block and if the value of m is not 1, it will execute this. Let's run this and copy it here. Let's run it. Suppose you enter say 5, click on submit, number is odd. The Y address become blank because it is refreshing it. When you click on submit, it is running itself. So it's refreshing the form. If you enter the value say 8, click on submit, it will print the number is even. So it is asking the user to enter a value and displaying the result accordingly. What if you want to check more than one value? You can't have numerous number of uh, if else statement. If you want to check the logical expression for multiple values, switch statement is preferred. So what is this uh, script doing? It is asking the user to enter the value between 1 and 5 and it will print in two words. Suppose you enter a numerical value 1, it will print O and E. If you enter value 2, it will print TWO. If the value is not between 1 and 5, it will display the value that number entered is not between 1 and 5. This script is explaining the usage of switch statement which is usually used when multiple if-else statements are required. This form is simple. It is displaying a text box asking the user to enter a value and click on submit. And the value entered by the user is assigned to num variable. The value entered in num variable is accessed and assigned to string variable sum value. It is converted from string to integer and assigned to n. This is a switch. It is asking the computer to jump. Switch means jump. And depending on the value of n, you jump into any of these case statements. If the value of n is 1, it will go here and will run this line and will display ONE. By break, it will jump outside this switch statement. So it will come here. The break is included because you don't want other case statements to be compared. Got it? Suppose the value of n is 3. It won't go here. It will not go here. Because the, n, the value of n is 3, it will go and display THRWE 3 and break, it will go out. Suppose user enters 7. It will not go into any of these case statements. It will go into default. Default will run when none of the case statement is satisfied. It will display, uh, please enter the number between 1 and 5. So let's copy it. Let's run this. It asks you to value, enter a value. Suppose you enter 3 and click on submit, displaying 3. You enter 1, submit display 1 and if you enter any other value suppose you enter 8 submit the number entered must be between 1 and 5 if you find any difficulty in understanding this lecture please mail me at bmharwani at yahoo.com thank you so much have a nice day